What's up, YouTube? Here, Chris Capri, SecondSkiesForex.com. So, just uh, the other weekend, I had done a private webinar for the members of the Advanced Traders Mindset course. And if you all recall, a few weeks ago on YouTube, I did a video on how to perform under pressure. And so, what I did is I kind of went over the science and how your brain relates to pressure and kind of introduced the topic to you and give you some methods and tactics so that you can perform under pressure, whether it's in trading, sports, business, poker, it doesn't matter. So that when the moment comes that you are able to perform as close to your baseline as possible and not underperform because that can often be a killer for success. So with our private members of the ATM course, I decided to do a much more in-depth webinar on how to perform under pressure. It's about an hour and a half video. And we went into some really advanced topics on the subject and advanced methods to work with this and how you can make sure that when it comes down to it in the moments that really matter, that you are able to succeed, you're able to perform the way you, your skills are, you know, whatever your skill level is, you're performing up to that, and that you're able to execute mentally what it is you want to do. Now, I have often been a big proponent that when it comes to success, that a good portion of success is formulaic. When you look at successful people across all fields, you'll see common variables. And these can be uh, various psychological variables or behavior variables or mindset variables. But you will often see a large cluster of common variables amongst them. That doesn't mean that success is completely patterned or completely formulaic, but a huge portion of success is formulaic. There will always be some intangibles and there will always be some things that you can't quite um, put into a formula, but by and large, most of what drives success is formulaic. And so during this private member webinar, I was kind of uh, given the task of being able to how could I translate pressure and performance into a formula? And what I ended up coming up with is after looking at the research and really kind of digging into it and uh, meditating on it, the formula that I came up with was this, which is that by and large, a basic form for pressure, whether you are handling pressure well or not, is that when you value the and you're thinking about and your mental you know activity is more focused on risks the potential risk the downside the money loss the psychological toll the you know whatever the the loss is if you're focused more on the risks and the potential losses more than the execution in other words what you need to mentally or physically execute to succeed at your tasks then you are not managing pressure well. And so the formula basically is risk over execution. If you are more focused on risk versus execution, then you are not managing pressure well. And you've probably had this experience. You know, If you are in a poker hand and you're thinking more about what you stand to potentially lose or get kicked out, of the tournament or all these other things versus actually executing your plan, your strategy correctly, then you are succumbing to the pressure. Whereas if you are much more focused on what it is you need to do to either make money on this hand or make money on this trade or execute this task correctly or you know kick a field goal and what the mechanics are, then you are someone who is managing pressure well. Because pressure does downgrade all of your skills, particularly it downgrades not just your physical, but your mindset and your neural activity and your psychology as well. And so because of that, it will focus or it will kind of trigger certain biases, particularly the negativity bias and loss aversion bias and many other biases that will divert your attention from what you need to be doing, which is executing your strategy and your task and your plan correctly versus being more focused on what is the potential loss. And so this is my formula for my basic formula for pressure. And it's well supported by science. The studies are very clear. In fact, what they've shown is, is that 
across the various sports or in chess games or in any sort of kind of competition or where something is on the line, something's important to you, um, something, you know, you feel responsible for it and there's a potential gain or loss of some kind due to that particular situation you're in. They have found that when people are much more focused on the risk versus execution, that they tend to do what is called playing it safe. And in that playing it safe, they're doing two important things incorrectly. One, they're passing up obvious avenues of profit, of success, of victory, or um, gaining ground versus just holding on to what they have. And the thing about it is, is that when you do this, you actually downgrade your skills because you're not focused on executing what you need to do correctly. And so this is a major problem because as you start to do this, they have been able to study statistically, there are many chances where people had obvious avenues to success in various situations and they passed it up just for the sake of a potential win and not wanting to lose. And so their performance and downgraded and they weren't executing the way they needed to. There's actually a really good example of this in the 2015 uh, American Football NFC Championship game. So the Packers had five minutes left. They're up 19-7, to which means they were at least um, two large scores, two touchdowns, or three, uh, you know, one large score and two small scores. They were ahead of the Seahawks. Statistically, at this point in the game, they were about an 80-plus percent chance to win the game. And then this particular play happens, and I was watching this game live, and it was one of the most fascinating examples of um, how teams were more focused on the risk versus actually, uh, and passing up obvious avenues of success versus actually focusing on what they needed to do. So they were just more worried about that, so they started playing conservative, and they, they weren't, really, weren't really playing football anymore. They kind of just did what they could do to kind of let the time go out. So the Seahawks have the ball. They're driving. They have a chance to kind of get close to the score. And then this particular thing happens here. And I want you to listen to this here. It's just a fascinating moment. Played later on, he did soldier on in this game that it's a 19-7 game, and Russell Wilson gets on the tip drill. Why, 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 why are you falling down? Okay, so Russell Wilson, the Seahawks quarterback, they're down by 12 points. He throws an interception with five minutes left in the game. The Packers intercept it, and what does the guy do? He actually falls down, and Deion Sanders, who's one of the commentators for the NFL Network, rightly asks, why did you fall down? Why did you fall down? You need to score. You need to actually press on. This game's not over. And so what happened is, is in that moment there, the player didn't have enough awareness to realize, A, there's not much time left, and B, that if they try and just kind of um, wait out the clock and kind of ride things down, that what's going to happen is that they can just wear out the Seahawks and that's it, and the Seahawks aren't going to be able to catch up in time. The funny thing about it was, what ends up happening is that the Packers try and run out the clock. They fail to do that on two separate possessions. The Seahawks score in both possessions, and with one minute and 25 seconds left, the Seahawks score a touchdown, and they are now up one point. And so they have a choice now. Do they actually go for a one-point extra, uh, one, uh, the extra point field goal, which would make the score 21-19? And that means that Green Bay could kick a field goal to win it, so they'd win by one point. Instead, the Seahawks correctly say, no, we're going for two because if the Packers, who have a really good offense, are able to drive down the field, they could kick the field goal. And if they do, the worst case scenario is we tie and we go into overtime. But if we only go for one point and they kick the field goal, we lose the game. So the Seahawks are focused on winning and they're looking for obvious avenues of success and gain while the Packers are playing conservative. This is the Seahawks' final play where they're going for two points, and a two-point conversion is actually a lower probability event, but they did it anyways, and here's how the play ends up resulting out. So what happens is the Seahawks focus on proper execution and avenue success in winning the game, 
the Packers are focused on being conservative and they pass up obvious avenues of success. They're more focused on the risks versus executing what they end up need to do. The Seahawks ended up winning the game and they went to the Super Bowl on this. This was one of the most classic examples of a team folding under pressure. The Green Bay Packers were playing in Seattle. They were already at a disadvantage, but they were winning the entire game until the fourth quarter, until the last few minutes in the game. They were always ahead in the game. And then when it came down the last few minutes, they started thinking about the risks of potential plays versus proper execution. They ended up losing that. And because of that, they folded to the pressure. This was one of the most classic examples of teams folding under pressure and focusing on the wrong things. So with that being said, to review, if you ever need a formulaic way to understand you know, pressure and how you are performing, think of it like this. If you're more focused on the risks and what you stand to lose versus executing correctly, you're not performing under pressure, you're not managing pressure correctly. If, however, while in high pressure moments, you are more focused on what it is you need to do correctly, versus the risks, then you are someone who is performing under pressure. Now, I'm not saying, you know, to put a little kink in this, I'm not saying you should ignore the risks. I'm not saying that at all. We need to be aware of this, the risks. We need to understand them. We need to quantify them. And we need to understand the possible scenarios around that. However, if we are dedicating more of our mindset, our thoughts, our cognitive activity towards the risks, versus execution, then we're going to perform before or below our baseline. And you are not going to be able to execute your skills as well as you can. You're not going to be able to manage the trade correctly. You're not going to be able to manage the poker hand correctly or the, the situation in sports or in business, whatever it is, you're going to be managing that situation improperly and not to the best of your abilities. And my goal is to teach you how to succeed and whether it's business, sports, trading poker life, whatever it is, then when the moments come down to it, when the pressure is there, that you are able to perform and execute your skills and do it at what you want to do. You wanna you want to complete this task, you can do that. You wanna you know manage the trade well, you can do it. You wanna handle this poker hand, you can do it. You wanna be able to, you know, make this big business deal, you can do that. That's what I'm dedicated towards is you becoming successful. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to your comments and questions on this. Make sure you, if you like, to give it a thumbs up below. And any comments or questions that you have around, please feel free to share. Also, any future ideas about uh, potential lessons that you would like a video on, let me know in the comment section below. Also, in the description, I'll have a link to other videos about performing under pressure and what it is that we do and how you can benefit from this. So with that being said, I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, be successful, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. If you've ever studied highly successful people, the elites in their field across business, sports, or finance, you'll notice a common response pattern to the challenging situations they face. You know, some people I can think of would be like Richard Branson or J.K. Rowling or there's a, even the Beatles. Their, their story of how they actually struggle in the beginning is fascinating. When you look at all Under these pressure, all, how do they behave? How do they react? How do they respond to those high pressure moments? Each of us wants to be able to perform under pressure, and there are many tools that we employ to perform in such moments, such as judgment, decision making, memory and focus. Pressure downgrades all of those tools. And in other words, pressure is the enemy to your success. More often than not, pressure causes you to fail or perform under your capabilities. And the science.